Um, I am a survivor, not of breast cancer, but I had a mini stroke January of this year. No, don't owe, mm -mm, don't do that. I'm here. I'm here. And I look good. <laughs> and I look good. So I say that to say this. I slipped and fell on my job, bumped my head, went to the emergency. I worked in the hospital. Went to the emergency, took a, a CAT scan, didn't know I had a stroke, and turned around a week later, went to my doctor, and found out it was a stroke. It was one of the biggest fears because prior to that, I was having headaches. I was having blackouts. I couldn't remember anything. Um, and, and, and the saga goes on. But I say that to say this to you. I am diabetic. Coming out with the, 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 with the, um, the, uh, the stroke and everything, I managed to lose 22 pounds. I managed to blood sugar from 9.3. Anybody know anything about an A1C? I just got it. I just got it back for my birthday last week. I got my report. It's now 6.9. Well on my way to getting off insulin. So if you don't believe he will do it, I'm here to tell you he will do it. Now you can clap. Now you can clap. I used to think that I wasn't beautiful enough. I used to think that I wasn't good enough. I was married for a long time, so it took me 20 years to write this poem. Bear with me. And this every sister, everybody that don't believe our book. I would never believed all the lies and all the tricks shut up your sleeves. All the doubt in myself you made me believe by bearing your children and gaining a little weight. All the love and all the beauty I saw in myself. See, that now turned to hate. See, you made me feel so insecure and so much pain. You told me I had two children. No one else would want me. And all I have right now is my own fat ass to blame. But you see, now that I've let you go and my main focus is back on me, I now know that I, I am beautiful. From my head to my toes to my even sometime ashy elbows, I now know that I, I am beautiful. From my Pudgy nose to my deep, dark, chocolate brown bedroom eyes. Did you check out my walk? A sway like this can only come from experience, baby making thighs. You need to know that I, I am beautiful. And even though my body is laced with stretch marks and my cellulite thighs are no longer thin, mm mm mm. Most brothers don't see that anyways. They see the love and the beauty that shines from within. And that, that is because I am beautiful. See, when I was with you, I thought you to be mine. Loving you unconditionally. Knowing my love for you was oh so blind. This is why I find it so easy to spit these next lines. Since you've overlooked all the wonderful qualities in me, brother, I am about to kick the ballistics of what you've lost and all other brothers now see. See, I am black. I am beautiful. I am suave and I am even sometimes very, very calm. I can be explosive. I am tick, tick, boom. I am with those young kids now call the bomb. I am intelligent. I am articulate. I am hip hop. Tell you, don't stop. I can make any man's eyes pop. I am dope. I am with those men sitting on death row. Now believes is their last and final hope. See, I am loving. I am kind. I am sweet, clean, and a neat. Nothing about me is artificial. From my bald head to my pedicured feet. Just to let you know, I now realize without you, <laughs> insecure, you're pitiful, and you're sad.
Just like you. Thank you. I'm okay. Thanks for asking. Thank you so much, Passion. I appreciate that. The next person I'm going to call up is our features, London. Make it back to the stage. Okay, let's give London a hand of applause. Thank you. Um, this poem is the domestic violence, but the kid point of view, because often women, well, people usually talk about the spouses, but this is the kid's point of view. DV affects me, too. She sits in the corner, squeezing her teddy bear. No tears in her eyes. All she can do is stare. The yelling starts again, and she covers her ears. Blood coming down her nose. Mama starts coming near. She holds her tight and makes her promise herself she will never go through this. That's when Mama went down with one last hit. The little girl grew up in a world all by herself. First skipped classes, then dropped out, all because she had no help. She met this boy named Q who said he'll take care of her. Because she had no daddy figure, all she wanted was for someone to be there for her. But you see, Q saw the weakness, so he took it to his advantage. Gave her adult drugs and drinks, knowing it would do more damage. The now teenage girl loved Q for what he told her. The nice shops, brand name clothing, and new places he showed her. That's when everything went downhill fast. The kicks, the black eyes, the hard slaps. She would cry at night holding her pillow like she once did the teddy bear. Women are victims, but kids are victims too. Stuck in a situation, they don't know what to do. They get put in a mindset called defense, where the yelling and screaming becomes too intense. Domestic violence is something that needs to be spoken upon. Don't wait till it's too late and a loved one is gone. You see, the more London hits the stage, the better and better she gets. London, thanks for sharing that. I know it's really hard, but you're doing really great. So, the next person I would like to call up is going to be Jay Divine. Now, this is a very dear poet of mine that the last time we saw each other, baby girl was not here, and she came to bless my stage with her little angel. I am so blessed, Divine. Divine, this is amazing. She's going to perform her poetry with her baby. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? How y'all? Listen, listen. I don't know how many times I'm going to be able to come out with her. Shoot, she about to wake up, so I need to hurry up. Anyway, Brother Earl, where you at? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're fuckery. Listen, shower sex. That's how she got here. <laughs> All right. Um, in the spirit of talking about survival and surviving, um, I have a confession. So my baby was born about seven weeks ago, September 3rd of this year. And um, five days after she was born, I found out I had to rush to the emergency room because I couldn't breathe. And I found out that I have peripartum cardiomyopathy. Dang. And I can't right now because I'll get winded. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's something, whether it's abuse, whether it's disease, whether it's just living in the Bronx because <clears throat> MTA is no joke. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was a comic in a past life. So um, before she wakes up <laughs> and. Y'all would think, you know, my little poem is a lullaby, but unfortunately it's not. It is um, a poem about, I guess, survival in, in a sense, surviving love. So um, here we go. Life looks different through tear-stained eyes, swollen, puffy. Life no longer seems as rosy as my once blushing cheeks. Love will make you tolerate strange things after doing strange things, all for the sake of love. I guess it's true. There really is a thin line between love and hate because love and hate are fucking each other in my heart and in my mind. I never knew I could hate you as much as I want to love you. Love is getting it in the ass right now with no protection or lube by hate. Life looks different when hate and love have a love-hate relationship. 
Love likes the sadomastic pain while hate takes great pleasure. Tears flow down love's angelic face. And love sees things differently the way I do. Raw. It's not in hate's nature to soften, to show humbleness or be dominated. But love is finally on top, finally on top, riding reverse cowgirl style. Seems like love has the better of hate until they simultaneously climax, causing my heart to break. A one night stand between love and hate left an indelible mark on my spirit. Love and hate seduced each other over drinks where judgment was cloudy. Feelings left unguarded, leaving vulnerable, vulnerable emotions at the mercy of themselves. Life looks differently through tear-stained eyes, swollen, puffy, raw, full of emotions without any substance. This one-night stand was circumstantial, even though there was no real excuse for it. Somewhere down the line, that thin line became the cum-stained sheets of love and hate, where it's housekeeping when you need them. That line needs to be redrawn so I could pick a side for good. I want love to dwell in the place reserved for you, my heart. But that's hard when love is lamenting over hate. Tears flow. Fears grow. I'm tormented by this torrid affair of conflicted emotions. It stirs up a commotion within my soul. I'm not whole. I've broken down, fallen to pieces. The conflict within never ceases. I don't know what to do. I feel nothing and everything at the same time. Maybe you can fuck me senseless so I can come hard, be numb after being scarred, not feel so dumb after having my heart marred. Life feels different after having your heart fucked over. After it innocently learns to love and trust and matures and learns about lust, but doesn't know the difference between kinky fuckery and legitimate pain. Crippled by the vein I keep closing and opening and closing out of confusion. If you aren't in collusion with hate, free me from this illusion so I can come to a conclusion. Teach me to love you without the tears, without the fears. No more silent cries. I want to see life and love again through clear eyes. Thank you. Let's give Divine another hand of applause. Thank you so much. This means a whole lot to me. Okay, the next person I'm going to call up to the stage, I got to explain a little story because he know I'm going to talk about that story. <laughs> so we met here at the south of France. This is like my, my love and familyhood place. I meet a lot of people that are friends and then they end up becoming family because I got a big heart like that. You'll just be added on to the sleeve and we're just family. So Kimbo, come up to the stage. Today was really amazing because I was going to get Mookie's cake done for his birthday. And who I see on the bus? Stop. Yo, my brother Kimbo. And he's like, I'm going to see you later, Coco. So we've seen each other now. So come bless this stage for me. Good evening, South of France. How you doing? 